Grimes, it's your old pal Spider-Man here, and I need your help. It appears that the city's biggest villains are all on the prowl. Yeah, yeah, I hear those villains escaped. Well, make sure Parker gets me some pictures. I gotta go. Oh, so you're the saps who are helping out Spider-Man, huh? You know, it's probably his fault all those costume clowns are running around the city. Spider-Man's just another criminal like <laughs> Thanks for the support, Mr. Jameson. <laughs> you serious? Hello and welcome to Theme Park History, the channel for everything to do with theme parks. Old and new, big and small. In today's episode, we explore the origins of the amazing adventures of Spider-Man, a motion-based 3D dark ride that opened at Islands of Adventure on May 28, 1999, and Universal Studios Japan on January 23, 2004. This attraction was suggested by all these webheads, so thank you to everyone for the comments. As always, if there's an attraction you would like us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. You never know, your suggestion might be next month's video. Also, a huge thank you to the over 3,000 of you who voted in our poll to decide what attraction we were going to cover this month. Based on Marvel Comics' Spider-Man, The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man is a groundbreaking attraction that redefined its ride genre when it opened in 1999. Promised by Universal as the greatest ride ever built, the attraction combines motion simulation, 3D film projections, and special effects, creating a first-of-its-kind ride system unlike anything guests have ever experienced before for at a theme park. Even though the attraction is almost 20 years old, The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man is still considered to be not only one of the best attractions Universal has created, but also one of the best attractions in the world by both fans and the theme park industry. Just like with any superhero movie, our video begins with the same cliché, an origin story. By the early 1990s, Universal Studios Florida had established itself as a must-visit theme park destination. Jay Stein, the chairman and CEO of Universal Parks and Resorts, began hinting to reporters of the idea of a major expansion coming to the Florida park. In September 1993, Universal would announce a 10-year, $3 billion expansion that would see the construction of a second theme park, five hotels, timeshare villas, and a golf course. Construction would begin in 1995 with Universal's goal to transform from just a theme park to a full-blown resort, one that could rival Walt Disney World. While details are sparse in the announcement, Universal did reveal that the new theme park would have at least 20 attractions, one of which being based on Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. Codenamed Project X, Universal would bring in Gary Goddard, who was the head of Landmark Entertainment at the time and responsible for the development of the King Kong Encounter, Terminator 2 3D, and Jurassic Park The Ride, to help design a new park and come up with ideas for new and exciting attractions. The new park would share a similar concept as Universal Studios Florida, but instead of focusing on movies, it would focus instead on cartoons. Cartoon World would combine timeless characters from animated shorts, children's books, and comics to bring the park to life. Universal would bring in intellectual properties to create stories to populate the entire park with cartoon characters and impressive attractions for people of all ages. Some of the areas in Cartoon Land would be the world of Seuss, Popeye's Island, the Northwest Mining Camp and Looney Tune Land. The centerpiece of the park would be DC Superhero Land, inspired by DC Comics. The land would be split into two different areas, half being the dark, gritty Gotham City, and the other being the City of Light, Metropolis. DC Land would feature two major attractions, a suspended twin coaster face-off between Penguin and Batman, in which guests choose either to ride the Penawing or the Batwing, and a Superman 3D attraction that would use a ride system similar to Disney Star Tours. Unfortunately, Universal Universal and Time Warner, who owned the rights to both the Looney Tunes and DC Comics, could not come to an agreement and all hopes of Cartoon World were cancelled. While Cartoon World might have been dead and gone, it didn't stop Universal from continuing work on the new park. Instead of focusing on just cartoons, the new park would now focus on epic adventures from written works, including ancient legends, novels, children's books, and comics. Now known as Islands of Adventure, the park would still feature attractions based on Dr. Seuss, Popeye and Dudley Do-Right, along with attractions themed to ancient myths and legends, and Jurassic Park. With Batman and Superman no longer involved in the new park, Universal would turn to DC Comics' rival, Marvel. At the time, Marvel was struggling financially and forced to file for bankruptcy. 
bankruptcy. In an attempt to save the company, Marvel began selling the film rights to their characters in numerous film studios. Another deal made at the time was Marvel and Universal, giving Universal the exclusive rights to build theme park attractions based on characters in the Marvel Universe. The original concept of DC Superhero Land would be tweaked and reworked to become Marvel Superhero Island. Now with a deal in place, Goddard and his team began work on an attraction for Marvel's most popular superhero, Spider-Man. Development of the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man began in 1996. An early concept for the attraction utilized an Omnimover ride system. The system would have taken guests through physical sets that featured 3D screens where the action would take place, marking the first time a 3D ride system was conceptualized. The Omnimover system would be dropped in favor of an enhanced motor vehicle, one similar to Disneyland's Indiana Jones and the Forbidden Eye, which opened a year earlier in 1995. For inspiration for the new ride system, Universal looked at their own attractions. The plan was to take the 3D film system used for T2-3D and combine it with the motion simulation elements of Back to the Future, the ride. The 12-person ride vehicle, known as the Scoop, was developed by Oceaneering International. The vehicle is mounted to a track roaming platform that provides the forward motion to move the vehicle through each scene. The vehicles are capable of 6 degrees of freedom and 360 degree rotation, achieved with a ring and pinion gear system. The the attraction features 13 30-foot tall screens, 12 which show 3D footage. To create an illusion of depth, 25 large format projectors and dozens of smaller projectors are used. Many of the screens are rear projected, marking the first time this was done for a 3D movie. To allow the ride to effectively combine 3D projections with moving viewers, a process was developed called squinching. First, the amount of distortion is predicted from a particular viewing angle. The same amount of distortion is then added in the opposite direction in order to counteract the effects. The attraction would not just be a computer-generated experience, as the on-screen action was complemented with off-screen effects and real sets. Some of the special effects throughout the attraction include fog machines, fire, wind, heat, mist, strobe lights, and water spray. All of these effects, along with the ride system, 3D projections, and the soundtrack, are controlled by a central industrial control system created by iTech Entertainment, which knows to 1 13th of a second when they are to execute. The finale of the attraction features a unique special effect brought together by all of the technology used in the ride. When the scoop rises off the ground and up 40 stories above the air in the city, a number of synchronized effects help achieve this without the vehicle ever leaving the ground. These include a movable building set, lighting cues, simulator movements, projections, and wind effects. In reality, the finale drop wouldn't be 400 feet, but rather just 10 inches. After four years of development, planning, and construction, The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man would soft open to Universal employees and their families on March 27, 1999. The attraction would officially open with Islands of Adventure on May 28, 1999. While Universal has refused to reveal exactly how much the attraction cost, reports suggested it was between 100 and 120 million million dollars. of theme parks, resorts, and nightlife. Universal Studios Escape. Are you ready? <laughs> Located within the Marvel Superhero Island at Islands of Adventure, or in the New York section at Universal Studios Japan, guests enter the Daily Bugle, the newspaper featured in the Spider-Man comics. A video plays of J. Jonah Jameson, the Bugle's editor-in-chief, touting the history and success of the newspaper, along with the introduction of a brand new news-gathering vehicle known as the Scoop. As guests walk through the offices of the Daily Bugle, they pass numerous empty desks, with reporters nowhere to be seen. The televisions in the office play a live news feed, revealing that the Sinister Syndicate, a collection of Spider-Man's biggest villains, Scream, Electro, Hydro-Man, Hobgoblin, is on the loose, led by Dr. Octopus. The group has attacked the city and is causing chaos with an experimental anti-gravity cannon created by Doc Ock himself. The Syndicate has stolen the Statue of Liberty and threatens 
to destroy it if the city does not surrender to them. With all of the Bugle's reporters fleeing from the chaos taking place, J. Jonah Jameson has no choice but to ask the guests to cover the story using the new scoop vehicle. After getting their night vision goggles, aka 3D glasses, guests enter the 12 person scoop and leave the Bugle's loading dock to head into the city. As they begin their journey, J. Jonah Jameson gives a motivational speech to the guests. Hello? This is Jonah Jameson. Roger, over. Is this thing on? Listen, Scoop. Crime reports are coming in from all over the city, and I'm starting to get worried. Did you see that? The spider signal! With Spider-Man nearby, trouble can't be far away. And you know what trouble means. Headlines! National coverage! So don't screw this up! I mean, uh, good luck. As the scoop makes its way through the back alleys, guests encounter Spider-Man, who warns he's in for the most dangerous night of his life, and asks for the guests to be careful. After nearly missing being hit by a trash truck driven by a Stan Lee cameo, guests enter a warehouse where overhead, the tablet of the Statue of Liberty is floating, having been removed from the statue. The guests have stumbled upon the warehouse where the Statue of Liberty is being held hostage by the Sinister Syndicate. After being spotted thanks to J. Jonah James the guests are attacked by the Sinister Syndicate. Electro tries to shock the guests using a sparking wire, but the scoop absorbs the shock and overloads the wire, sending Electro flying. Scream lands on the hood of the scoop, trying to claw and shred the guest apart, only for Doc Ock to throw her aside to shoot his anti-gravity cannon at the vehicle, missing multiple times. The scoop escapes into the sewers, where guests encounter Spider-Man once again. Spidey tells guests to head back to the Bugle, but Hydro-Man appears behind him. Spider-Man tries to attack Hydro-Man, but has no success against the Water Foe, whose punch uproots a pipe, which slams into the scoop and sends the vehicle moving down the sewer. Guests once again come face to face with Doc Ock, who busts through a brick wall and latches onto the scoop's bumper with one of his mechanical arms. Using another to spew fire, Doc Ock threatens the guests. Starting to yeah. But the scoop pulls backwards until the bumper comes off, sending Doc flying back through the wall. The scoop escapes from the sewers to the river and bridge, where guests encounter the hobgoblin on his hoverboard and threatens to blow them up with his pumpkin bombs. As the hobgoblin throws a pumpkin bomb at the scoop, Spider-Man arrives just in the nick of time to catch it with his webbing and hurls it back at the bridge. The hobgoblin tries once again to blow up the scoop, but Spider-Man intervenes, messing with Hobgoblin's aim and forcing him to throw the pumpkin bomb above the guest and into the bridge, which explodes and causes the bridge to slightly collapse. The scoop is able to escape and makes its way back to the street. Spider-Man and the guests encounter Doc Ock, who tries to shoot Spider-Man with the anti-gravity cannon. Doc Ock eventually hits the web slinger with one of his mechanical arms, sending him flying. Doc Ock turns his attention to the guests, who are now defenseless, and shoots the scoop with the anti-gravity cannon, wishing them a nice trip. The scoop begins rising into the sky due to the effect of the anti-gravity and reaches a height of 400 feet. Spider-Man tries to pull the scoop down, but is grabbed by the hobgoblin, leaving the scoop to trail behind. The scoop is pulled through the city, slamming side to side as it zooms through the air. Though Scream manages to pin Spidey to a water tower, Hobgoblin crashes right into the vehicle, falling off his hoverboard and downs its streets below. Electro and Hydro-Man return to confront the guests, but Spider-Man swings back to take on the duo. Electro tries to strike Spider-Man with his static, but strikes Hydro man instead, evaporating him into a plume of steam. Doc Ock re-emerges and wishes the guests happy landing, as he once again shoots the scoop with the anti-gravity cannon, but this time it restores gravity. With gravity restored, the scoop begins to head into a 400-foot free fall straight down into the streets below. At the last second, a web appears below the scoop, as Spider-Man is able to reach the guests in time to save them from their demise. As the scoop reaches the ground, guests see the Statue of Liberty has been restored, and the villains have been caught by Spider-Man, being wrapped into a web cocoon. Spider-Man thanks the guests for their help, and sends them back to the Daily Bugle, where he has rigged the anti-gravity cannon to lift Jameson up to the ceiling in his office. Guests unload from the ride and enter the Spider-Man shop, where shirts and other souvenirs from your local friendly neighborhood Spider-Man are sold. The five-minute attraction has been well received with guests, as many consider it to be the crown jewel of Islands of Adventure. The attraction has gone on to win many awards from the theme park industry, including the Golden Ticket Award for the best dark ride for 12 straight years from 1999 to 2000. At Universal Studios Japan, the attraction was responsible for an uptick in attendance levels when it opened in 2004, rising from 8.8 .8 million people in 2003 to 9.9 .9 million in 2004. 
On August 28, 2009, the Walt Disney Company agreed to purchase Marvel Entertainment for $4 billion. The deal was finalized on December 31, 2009, and gave Disney full ownership of the company. Immediately after the news broke, theme park fans began speculating on what the future of Marvel Superhero Island would be, as Disney and Universal are rivals in the theme park industry. Would Disney find a way to end the deal between Universal and Marvel? If the deal couldn't end, would Disney be allowed to have Marvel characters and attractions at their theme parks? If the deal became null and void, what would replace Marvel Superhero Island? There are also questions about what will happen to Marvel's long-term movie deals and its agreement with Disney rival Universal Studios and its superhero island in Orlando, Florida. Rick Fogelstong has written extensively about the Disney empire. If Disney's taking them away, in effect, from Universal, wow, what a shrewd move on their part. We've done some research on what the agreement between Marvel and Universal is, and here's how it breaks down. The agreement made by Universal and Marvel in 1994 presides over the use of Marvel properties in non-Universal theme parks. The agreement allows for the use of Marvel characters The Avengers, Spider-Man, X-Men, and the Fantastic Four at Islands of Adventure, while it is only Spider-Man at Universal Studios Japan. The agreement states that these Marvel characters can only be featured at Universal theme parks east of Mississippi, meaning Walt Disney Disney World is not allowed to have any of the characters featured at their parks, as well as any characters in the same family, meaning any team members, side characters, or villains that are closely associated with the aforementioned superheroes. This agreement also stands for the Tokyo Disney Resort, along with the stipulation Disney is not allowed to use the Marvel name in any of their US and Tokyo parks. Disney is also not allowed to create any motion simulator attraction similar to the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, no matter which Marvel character it is. While the agreement the agreement puts a bind on Walt Disney World and the Tokyo Disney Resort. The Disneyland Resort in California is not limited by it, with the exception of not being able to use the Marvel name and creating a Marvel Motion Simulator attraction. The first Marvel attraction to open at a Disney theme park in the United States was Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout at Disney's California Adventure in 2017. It was announced on March 20, 2018 that attractions based on Spider-Man and the Avengers would be coming to California Adventure, with the first attraction attraction opening by 2020. Outside of the United States and Japan, Disney parks are allowed to use any Marvel properties, the Marvel name, as well as create any type of ride they want. Some of these attractions include the Iron Man Experience, the first ever Marvel attraction at a Disney theme park, and Ant-Man and the Wasp, Nano Battle, slated to open in 2019 at Hong Kong Disneyland, along with a land dedicated to Marvel at Walt Disney Studios Park in Disneyland Paris, which is slated to open within the next five years. While Walt Disney World isn't allowed to use many of the popular Marvel characters, it hasn't stopped them from finding a way to bring them to life at their resort. It was announced on July 15, 2017 that a Guardians of the Galaxy attraction would be coming to Epcot by 2021, replacing Ellen's Energy Adventure. The Guardians can be featured at the Florida Park due to having little to no connection to any of the Marvel superheroes featured at Universal Studios Orlando. Monorail trains have promoted Marvel Studios films, The Avengers, Iron Man 3, and Captain America Civil War. While these monorail trains Trains feature characters that are used at Islands of Adventure. They operate only on the resort and express lines of the Walt Disney World monorail system, which runs entirely outside of the theme park with the exception of the Epcot line, technically not violating the agreement. After the acquisition was finalized, Universal published a press release stating that their deal with Marvel would stand and stay in place as long as the existing attractions remained in operation. Disney CEO Bob Iger would acknowledge that Disney would continue to honor any contracts that Marvel currently has, even if it it was with its competitors. Now knowing that Marvel Superhero Island was here to stay, Universal announced on May 19, 2011 that Spider-Man would undergo a major refurbishment, with the entire ride film being remastered into 4K high definition, the installation of a new projector system, and even new 3D glasses. The attraction would reopen on March 8, 2012 to rave reviews, adding another level of realism and immersion with all the new upgrades, making sure another generation of both Marvel and theme park fans get to experience what it would be like to save the day with the web slinger. The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man is a revolutionary attraction that is unlike anything seen before at a Universal theme park. 
With the combination of 3D film, ride movement, special effects, and physical sets for the very first time, the attraction would usher in a new age of theme park rides. The attraction is often considered to be the inspiration for many future attractions to come, including Curse of Dark Castle, Transformers The Ride 3D, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, and Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. Whether it was when the attraction opened in 1999, or the upgraded version in 2012, there's no denying the amazing adventures of Spider-Man is one of the most immersive and exciting experiences ever created, one that will get your spidey senses tingling. So that is the theme park history of the amazing adventures of Spider-Man. As always, thank you for watching the video and supporting the channel. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if there's any attraction you want us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Wait a minute. Mark, was that? That's Spider-Man. Sure look like him. Spider-Man, how's it going? How's Jeez. it going? Dude, Spider-Man. Hey, thanks for dropping in, buddy.